Why does Capcom hate Mega Man? Why is Capcom killing Mega Man? Huh. You know what? Screw Capcom! I think a lot of us have accepted that there may never be a new official Mega Man game, but that hasn't stopped this awesome community from making its own. I asked you guys on Twitter which ones I should try, and after playing just about everything you guys suggested, I'm back with a video. I'll do my best to put links to these games in the description. Let's talk about some Mega Man fan games! Let's kick this thing off with one of the best and most well-known Mega Man fan games, Mega Man Unlimited. I tried this game a while ago, and it was pretty damn hard, but I decided to take another crack at it and see if I could do any better. I couldn't. No, but seriously, this is one of the toughest Mega Man games out there. I decided to start with Rainbow Man, because that seemed the least scary. Like, what's a rainbow gonna do to me? Right. Okay, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This level is bullshit. I don't know if I'm just not as sharp as I used to be or if there's some power you get later that makes this easier, but I could not stop dying on these crazy laser puzzles. I get that they did this kind of thing in Mega Man 2, but that game's honestly not perfect. I'm not against the idea of having to go through a stage a few times in order to learn it, but this stage presents you with situations that give you virtually no time to even react, which I feel is something that's important to Mega Man's core design. No wonder this game's called Mega Man Unlimited. It's gonna take me an unlimited amount of Mega Mans to get through this. The furthest I got in this level was the mini boss, which I didn't even have a chance to fight because once again I was murdered by a laser! I was pretty mad at this game at this point, so I decided to try another level. Try Nitro Man? Trinitro Man? I don't know. This guy's level was hard as balls. However, it didn't feel unfair like Rainbow Man's level. Try Nitro Man's level actually gives you time to react to your surroundings. For example, there are these tricky puzzles with these exploding blocks that go off when you touch them or shoot them, but if you mess up, you can usually just back out of the screen and reset until you get it right, which is how Mega Man levels should be in my opinion. Anyway, Try Nitro Man himself was a tough son of a bitch, but I did not want to do that level again, so I summoned every ounce of willpower and I scraped together a victory. After being awarded Try Nitro Man's weapon, I figured I should go after a boss that would require a lot of heavy firepower. So I went after Tank Man, hoping that was his weakness. It wasn't. I died. Then I tried Nail Man. Safe to say after a few attempts, I got screwed. This was where I decided to put the game down. Mega Man Unlimited is definitely a good game, but I felt like the difficulty, even on normal, was a little crazy, but maybe I'm just a little bitch. But if you're pro at Mega Man and you want to be challenged, this game will absolutely deliver. It's good, just not quite my cup of tea. And I don't play games on easy, so don't even start with that. Rockman 4 Minus Infinity, or as I like to call it, Mega Man 4 on Bath Salts, is a ROM hack that I'd always heard of but never got around to checking out. First things first, I gotta set the game to English. So obviously I started with Pharaoh Man just to see what my favorite robot master's up to in this game, and the first thing that happens is my controls get reversed. Yeah, there are like, statuses in this game that totally throw off your controls in different ways. I don't know how I feel about it. So this level starts out pretty challenging, but nothing too crazy. Although I started to get concerned when Pharaoh Man himself showed up halfway through the level and did a weird spastic disco dance and then ran away. Things got really trippy when I got to this room with all the magma. I had never played a Mega Man ROM hack before this, so I really didn't know what to expect, but apparently you can just rewrite a game from the ground up. I realized this game was gonna be totally bananas when Shadow Man, who's not even in Mega Man 4, showed up. Yeah, weird. Weird, right? You know what's even weirder? He cut my damn head off! This dude straight up assassinated me. What in the world have I gotten myself into? There were these crazy statues of other robot masters shooting fire all over the place while my controls were just going haywire. This game is seriously coked out. But holy shit, the fight with Pharaoh Man is bonkers. The first thing he does is ejects you all the way back up to the surface on a geyser of quicksand or lava or something and begins the battle. He's definitely faster and more difficult than usual, but I managed to hang in there for a while and see one of the many unique features of this game, Rage Mode. So he changes color, shoots a bunch of fireballs, and destroys the floor, sending us back down into the level, and commences to unload an insane barrage of fireballs at me. I have never seen a Mega Man boss move so fast or shoot so much shit at once. Bath salts. Don't try it, kids. 
The whole game is more or less like this too. Pharaoh Man may be one of the crazier ones, but all the bosses have a rage mode and the levels are definitely more intense. This game isn't really even that hard, it's just crazy! You've got Ring Man who can ride his own rings across the stage, which is pretty cool. Dust Man who actually heals when you shoot projectiles into his vacuum sucker thing. Skull Man whose fight takes place in this half pipe where he Tony Hawks your ass repeatedly. If you want a crazy ass adrenaline rush of a Mega Man game, try Rockman 4 minus infinity. Conceptually, Mega Man A Day in the Limelight is probably the most fun game I'm going to talk about because you get to play as the Robot Masters. Awesome, right? You're probably already googling that shit. Well, slow down there, Sparky! You might want to hear what I have to say first. I can tell that whoever made this had the best of intentions. Each Robot Master uses their special weapon as their main attack, and you even have to use them to interact with the levels and make progress, like using Electman's Thunder Beam to power these generators and open gates. Problem is, the game really lacks polish and feels pretty frustrating to play a lot of the time. Just look at this ridiculous ridiculously badly designed jump. It took me forever to even get to a boss because of how clunky the characters felt sometimes. Gutsman literally can't walk. You have to hop everywhere. And that might work if the stage you had to do with him wasn't completely fucking vertical. But after hours of playing this game, I did get to Quick Man using Bomb Man. And at this point, it's time I should mention another randomly clunky part of this game. The start menu, which I opened in Quick Man's boss gate and accidentally hit exit and sent myself back to the boss select. But I summoned the willpower to do it again and finally beat Quick Man. Man. This game's honestly pretty disappointing because of how cool the concept is, yet the execution's so sloppy. Good thing they made a second one! So A Day in the Limelight 2 actually gets prefaced with some backstory, which is nice. Once I got to the stage select, I chose Shadow Man and had the absolute privilege of playing as one of my favorite robot masters, Quick Man. And he was a ton of fun to play. He runs fast, jumps high, and shoots boomerangs. Overall, the levels felt so much more polished than the first game. I managed to get to Shadow Man without pulling my hair out, and while fighting him, it really felt like I had to capitalize on my speed and and agility to beat him. The way I had to approach and avoid Shadow Man was totally different from how I would as Mega Man. Sure, Quick Man's weapon doesn't have as much range as Mega Man's, but he's also more nimble. Honestly, all the stages felt challenging, but fair. And the Robot Masters you play as felt unique in their own way, with their own special powers you have to use to overcome the different obstacles each level throws at you. Heat Man's Teleport, Flash Man's Time Stopper, Wood Man's Leaf Shield, they all felt interesting and satisfying to use. I should mention that when I finally found what level you play through as Metal Man, I was a tad disappointed at the fact that the Metal Blades weren't totally OP, but I guess you can't win them all. Anyway, I definitely recommend A Day in the Limelight 2 for a straight up fun time. Oh, and there's also a third one which I played a little bit of, but at that point the concept started to feel a little stale, but maybe it's good. Try it and let me know! Here's a ROM hack I've always wanted to try. Mega Man in the Mushroom Kingdom is a very cute Mario-themed reskin of Mega Man 1. Each level is themed after a certain landscape from one of the first three Mario games on NES, and Mega Man's outfit even changes to match Mario's color palette from whichever game the level is themed after. The enemy sprites are replaced with Mario enemies, although their behavior stays the same. Sometimes it makes sense, and sometimes it doesn't. Like, I get why you'd reskin a Sniper Joe as a Hammer Bro, but the execution seems a little... weird. But then you've got enemies like the cute little bladers from Mega Man that are actually nightmarish hell spawns, replaced with those scary ass floating masks from Mario 2, which is much more appropriate for such vile, unholy fiends. This game doesn't push the capabilities of a ROM hack too far compared to something like Minus Infinity, but it's still charming enough to make you want to play all the levels and see which Mario worlds they're themed around. The difficulty is pretty much right on the money, maybe even a little easy for a Mega Man game, and it's a little glitchy at times, or... A lot glitchy. All in all, it's just a neat little ROM hack that's worth trying if you're into that whole crossover thing. Mega Man Super Fighting Robot is another entry in the insanely hard for the sake of hard category. Maybe a little too much so. Hey, let's start with this guy. I mean, he's literal trash. Okay, how about Axeman's stage? Murdered! Fucking Wizard Man? Well, screw this. Look, I'm not saying this game is bad, but you gotta really hate yourself to want to go through all this. But hey, at least it's got the theme from the animated series. 
Another ROM hack, Mega Man Ultra is a hack of Mega Man 2. One of the coolest things about it is all the 8-bit remixed music from across the Mega Man series, from Classic to X to the Game Boy, and even some Zelda and Metroid music later on. Also, the backstory to this one has to do with X's creation, so that got me excited. This hack is pretty extensive and pretty much a rebuilt game from the ground up. It's a pretty challenging game, sometimes a little too much so, but I did manage to beat Metal Man and get his... Nazi blades? I had myself a good chuckle when I went to Woodman's level, which is totally just a Mario level, with the music and everything. That level was actually really easy, but then Woodman shit all over me, so... yeah. I tried Bubble Man stage, but it honestly just felt unfair, although it did use a remix of Launch Octopus's theme. Quick Man stage was cool because it uses that rooftop scene from the intro, but you can't beat this level if you're a human. Last time I checked, I was, so... It's a bummer. Seriously, look at this shit. How in the world are you supposed to survive this? I mean, at this point, I just kept trying levels to hear the cool song remixes. Heat Man's stage was Vile's music from X3. Crash Man's stage played Infinity Maginion's theme from X6. The hell's a Maginion, anyway? That level was pretty eerie because you had to fight these evil eddies, which really made me wonder what was going on in the story. This game is interesting, but parts of it really do seem unfair, like this ladder shit. It's a pretty neat game if you feel like giving it a try, but just be prepared for it to pull some shenanigans on you. Let's end this video on a high note. Mega Man Rock Force was definitely a treat to play. It had this really weird backstory where Mega Man recruits a bunch of robot masters to help him fight evil just in case evil ever shows up again, which I'm guessing is the Rock Force, and guess what, lol, evil shows back up again. There's also this new robot Dr. Light builds called Justice Man, who like Mega Man has a strong sense of... well, you get the idea. So I guess some new baddies show up and kidnap the Rock Force, and it's up to Mega Man and Justice Man to save them. Oh snap, is this an intro stage? It's almost like that's a sign of a good Mega Man game. This stage does some clever stuff with these reflective surfaces that your shots bounce off of, and you get to apply what you learned to the boss fight at the end. Holy game design, Batman! So you get to the stage select, and as it turns out, the guy you just fought is Shockman, one of the game's robot masters, so I figured if I beat him once, I could do it again. Shockman's stage is definitely challenging, but actually a lot of fun and very fun. Fair. Once again, it introduces a new mechanic, in this case, these conductive floors, and for the duration of the level, you're shown how different surfaces interact when introduced to an electrical current, and guess what? The boss uses the same mechanic! How about that? But this is what good Mega Man level design looks like. Like, you see this part with the water? It's painfully apparent before you ever get in the water that it'll shock you when these conductors touch it. So as long as you time it right, you'll never get shocked, and you don't have to be some kind of god-tier speedrunner on Adderall to make it out on time. Anyway, the fight with Shockman is super clever because it utilizes this whole electrified floor thing you've been learning about for the entire level, so if you time your jumps right, it's totally doable. Sure, there's a learning curve, but once you've got it down, you've got it. And that's how a Mega Man boss should be, in my opinion. Anyway, I played this one for quite a while, and I even managed to guess a weakness right on my first time through, so points to the game for being intuitive. Don't get me wrong, this game is super challenging, but if you're a pretty good Mega Man player, you'll probably dig it quite a bit. There is one more fan game that came out pretty recently called Mega Man 2.5D, but I'm gonna do a totally shameless plug here and tell you to go watch me play it on my collab channel, Nate and Dookie. It's this really visually awesome co-op Mega Man game that mixes the 2D sprites with 3D graphics and requires both players to work together to progress. I'll put a link to that playlist at the end of this video and in the description or something. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun trying out all these Mega Man fan games, and I appreciate you guys giving me suggestions on Twitter, which is my segue into, hey, you should follow me on Twitter, it's at DookieShed if you couldn't guess. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel for more content just like this or I'll kill you! Oh, and also there's this little like button under the video. If you hit that like button, you'd be doing me a massive favor, so just, just do that. Unless you didn't like it, then <laughs> don't hit it! <laughs> I would like to thank all of my generous supporters on Patreon, whose names you see in the credits right now, especially the Icarus Gambit, Mero Ochi, Angel Freisinger, Randall Schultz, The NM22, Mika Bunny, Kayoya, Jake Hester, Stooge, and Ragnaramus. Of course, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can find a link to that down in the description. Every little bit helps. Making my living off of YouTube is a very inconsistent thing, so, you know, whatever. Also, I have a side channel with my fellow YouTuber Nate Wants to Battle. Uh, it's called Nate and Dookie, because he's Nate and I'm Dookie. Wow, that's amazing. And, uh, we're playing Mega Man stuff this month, and we're just playing all kinds of stuff all the time, and uploading multiple times a day, so if you want a piece of that action, you can just click on this little thing up in the window, uh, there, and watch a video, or subscribe, or whatever. So, yeah. Bye.